Hi everyone. In this chapter, we are going to discuss covalent bonding and simple molecular compounds. So on the left, I have two different diagrams of water, which is H2O. So on the top, we have a Lewis diagram for water. So we'll learn how to draw that later. And on the bottom, we have a ball and stick model for water. So it looks a little bit different, um, but two different ways to visualize a molecular compound. All right, so covalent bonds. Previously, in the last chapter, we discussed ionic bonding, where electrons are transferred from one atom to another so that both atoms have eight electrons, or uh, we can call that the octet rule. However, there is another way that atoms can achieve a full valence shell, and that involves sharing electrons. So let's look at the example of two hydrogen atoms. So we have these two hydrogen atoms that are separate from each other, and they're actually unstable on their own. But if they get close enough to each other, they can form a molecular compound. And they can share their two valence electrons so that each of them have those two valence electrons. Now, by sharing those valence electrons, um, they're going to be similar to helium. And remember, helium on the periodic table has two electrons, and helium's a noble gas that is very, very stable. So hydrogen, or H2, and helium are the exception to the octet rule because both of them are happy with just two electrons, but most of the other atoms on the periodic table want eight electrons. There are a couple of other exceptions, but we'll get to those later. So the two electrons that are joining these hydrogen atoms together are called a bonding pair of electrons. So these are a bonding pair. And of course, we can also call that a covalent bond. So a molecule, it consists of atoms connected by covalent bonds and is the smallest part of a compound that retains the chemical identity of that compound. Now, previously, we also talked about diatomic molecules, and we used an acronym to remember them, Hofbrinkel. So remember, this stood for hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, iodine, nitrogen, and chlorine. So each of these elements on the periodic table prefer to be in a pair with itself. <laughs> so H2, for example, um, is one of those diatomic molecules, but we could also have O2, F2, Br2, etc. So these elements like to be in a pair because they're going to share their electrons and become much more stable as a result. So again, these are the diatomic molecules. All right, so let's talk about properties of molecules versus ionic compounds. So compounds that contain covalent bonds, also called molecular compounds or molecules, exhibit different physical properties than ionic compounds. So remember, physical properties are properties that you cannot change about a molecule or a compound, right? So that would be something like their melting point, their boiling point, their density. These are all things that cannot be changed. Um, so molecules are electrically neutral. 
And that means that the attraction between molecules is going to be much weaker than that between electrically charged ions. So for example, in the previous chapter, we talked about sodium chloride, which is an ionic compound. And sodium can form a plus one ion and chlorine can form a minus one ion. And they uh, are attracted to each other through those opposite charges. And that attraction is going to be much, much stronger than the attraction between, let's say, two of our hydrogen molecules. So we've got H2 and H2. The attraction between those molecules is going to be very, very weak because they don't have a charge. They're just electrically neutral. So we have increasing strength going up from covalent molecules to ionic compounds. Now we can also visualize this by looking at the boiling points for sodium chloride versus water. Now remember, uh, we said that ionic compounds actually have crystal lattices. So it's not just one sodium ion, one chloride ion, for example, it's actually an entire structure of alternating ions. And then let's compare that to water, which is up above. So covalent compounds like water generally have much lower melting and boiling points than ionic compounds. And again, that has to do with the attraction between molecules versus between ions. So for example, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, while sodium chloride boils at 1,413 degrees Celsius. So that tells us right away that the attraction between sodium and chloride ions is really, really strong. So it requires a lot of energy to break them apart. But water molecules are much easier to break apart and turn into a gas, for example. Okay, so how do we visualize molecular compounds? Well, in the previous chapter, we did use Lewis diagrams to visualize ionic compounds. And we can do the same thing for molecular compounds or molecular substances. So let's look at our example of hydrogen again. Uh, we know that each hydrogen has one valence electron. So we can symbolize that with the chemical symbol for hydrogen, which is H. And then we can put one dot next to it uh, for its one valence electron. Now, if we want to show those two hydrogens coming closer together to form a bond, we can draw that uh, like that down below. <laughs> uh, in class, I would actually point to this, but it's hard on my uh, iPad. So the two hydrogen atoms are sharing those two electrons in between them. Now, really, those electrons are actually moving around both atoms. They're not staying stagnant in between. But for the purpose of a Lewis diagram, we just show them in between the two atoms. Now, you could also represent those two dots as just a line between the two atoms. So either way, those are going to symbolize covalent bonds. So if you prefer to show each individual electron, you can draw them as dots. But if you want to show a bond as a line, that's OK, too. Either one is uh, fine. Just remember that the line is actually two electrons. So let's look at another example. Let's look at fluorine. So earlier I mentioned fluorine is one of the diatomic molecules. So if we draw fluorine and its Lewis diagram, 
remember fluorine is in group seven if we're just looking at the representative elements. So fluorine has seven valence electrons and fluorine wants to have eight valence electrons. So one way to do that is to share electrons with another fluorine atom. So if those fluorine atoms get closer together, they can share those two electrons that were previously alone or by themselves. So now let's say we just look at the fluorine on the left. So just this one. So now we can see that the fluorine on the left has two, four, six, eight electrons. And then let's say we look at the fluorine on the right. That also has two, four, six, eight electrons. So both fluorines are fulfilling the octet rule and they're much more stable. Now, also we could represent those two shared electrons as a line or a bond, but either way, we're representing a covalent bond. Now, the fluorine molecule is a little bit different from the hydrogen molecule because each fluorine also has these six other electrons surrounding it, right? So these six electrons that are in pairs around each fluorine, those are called non-bonding pairs or lone pairs of electrons. So we do not draw those as lines because they're not forming a bond. We keep those as dots in Lewis diagrams. Now, so far we've been talking about uh, diatomic molecules where each atom is the same. But what if we were to mix it up and let's say have a molecule between hydrogen and fluorine? So let's draw the Lewis diagram for the molecule HF, which is hydrofluoric acid. Um, if you've watched Breaking Bad, you might have heard of hydrofluoric acid. Uh, there was an episode where they used it to get rid of some evidence. Um, hydrofluoric acid is technically a weak acid, but it can uh, penetrate skin really easily because it's really small. So you have to be really careful with hydrofluoric acid. You have to wear like a hazmat suit essentially and multiple pairs of gloves if you want to deal with hydrofluoric acid. But anyway, let's draw the molecule for this. So again, hydrogen would really like to have two electrons uh, to be like helium. And then we know that fluorine wants eight electrons or eight valence electrons, right? To be like neon. So both want to become like a noble gas and be stable. So we're going to bring these two unpaired electrons together and we'll show them in between the two atoms. And then fluorine also has these six other electrons that are all paired up. So those are the lone pair electrons. And then remember, we could also draw the covalent bond as a line. And then we'll still draw the other six electrons on fluorine as pairs of dots. So now hydrogen has two electrons. So if we were to draw a circle just around hydrogen, we can see that it has two valence electrons. And then if we do the same for fluorine, we can see that it now has eight valence electrons. So both hydrogen and fluorine are happy. All right, so let's do a practice problem. Draw the Lewis diagram for the following diatomic molecules. And you can use either two dots or a line to represent a covalent bond. 
So remember, you first want to see how many valence electrons each atom has, and then you want to try to pair up any unpaired electrons. So I'll let you try this on your own first. You can pause the video while you do that, and then when you're done, you can unpause and we'll go over it together. All right, so let's start with HCl, which is hydrochloric acid. Um, this is a strong acid. So uh, this one, though, you only need to really wear gloves with. You don't have to wear like an entire hazmat suit with it. Um, so earlier we saw that hydrogen has just one unpaired electron or one valence electron. It's in group one. And then chlorine is similar to fluorine because it's in group seven. So it has seven valence electrons. And I'm just gonna put those pairs of electrons on the right hand side so that we can see the unpaired electrons teaming up together. Okay, so if we pair up those unpaired electrons between hydrogen and chlorine. Now hydrogen is happy because it has two valence electrons and chlorine is happy because it has eight valence electrons. So this one was very similar to hydrofluoric acid. All right, let's do the same thing for the diatomic molecule chlorine. So Cl2. So we just saw that each chlorine is going to have seven valence electrons. So we'll draw the Lewis diagram for each. And I'm going to make sure that the unpaired electrons are facing each other, just to make it pretty, right? So now we're going to pair up those two unpaired electrons. And then we're going to also show the lone pairs of electrons for each chlorine. Okay, so if we were to just look at the chlorine on the left, we can see that it has two, four, six, eight valence electrons, so it is happy. And then if we do the same thing for the chlorine on the right, it also has two, four, six, eight electrons. So both chlorines are happy. They're fulfilling the octet rule. Now last, let's look at HBr, which is hydrobromic acid. So this is going to be very similar to HF and HCl. So hydrogen just has one valence electron. Uh, bromine is in group seven. So it also has seven valence electrons, similar to fluorine and chlorine. And if we pair up those unpaired electrons, hydrogen is going to be happy because it has two valence electrons and bromine is also going to be happy because it now has eight valence electrons. And then remember, we could also draw those covalent bonds as a line. Oops, uh, that should be a CL. There we go. So you could draw these molecules either way. They're both correct. And that's how we draw Lewis diagrams for these molecules. So we'll see these a lot going forward. Um, I think we'll stop there for now. And in the next video, we'll look at some more uh, complex molecules and their Lewis diagrams. So we'll learn how to draw water um, as a Lewis diagram and a couple of other molecules as well. So I will see you then.